Today in the garage, we're going on a field trip. To here, Ford East carburetor and auto repair. My buddy's shop, so he can rebuild this carburetor off of old Charlie. Let's go. Brought you a present. A present. It's a present. What do you know about this? What do I know about that? What do you know about this? I know that that's a uh, alternator. No, 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 a carburetor. <laughs> uh, rumor has it you fix these here. Once in a while, yes, yes, I do do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so who are you and what do you do? Uh, my name is Jerry. I rebuild carburetors. I mean, that's what I do. How long have you been doing this? Uh, I took over the shop in 2012, and prior to that, I worked for my grandfather who started the business and my uncle who took it over from him after he retired. And then I took it over from my uncle when he decided to retire. Rumor has it carburetors are a dying breed. What do you what do you say about that? <laughs> Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Bunch of these that need to be done. Those that are done over there. This one, this one here. I don't think it's a dying breed. I think it's just they don't build them anymore. So guys like me repair them and keep the old stuff on the road. All right, let's see what we got here. I bet you that thing's gonna be nasty inside. Think so? Gas tank's bad? Gas tank is horrible. The gas tank, I think I was telling you earlier, is like a sandbox. Oh, yeah, that's not good. Well, we're gonna find out. Everything else, everything seems pretty open and movable, so that's a big plus. I did manually activate the, uh, the fuel, the throttle. And you can see the jets pumping fuel out. You know, whether anything else inside is not blocked, who knows, but. I mean, it all seems to work externally. Ooh, we'll find out what it looks like internal. Yeah, fresh cleaning wouldn't hurt. Definitely not. And you got tag on it, which is really nice. It's always nice to have the extra tag. What does that mean? Well, it's, all, it's basically the number of the carburetor and it gives you your ability to know everything about the carburetor. What it fit, if it wasn't the proper one, it tells me when I look everything up, what I have to adjust the float to. Um, Factory settings. Yeah, basically. I'm betting you could do this with your eyes closed. <laughs> um, some people have often said that to me and I probably could. It's not as bad in here as you think it is. You would think, you would think it would be a lot worse, but it is, you can see some junk down inside there. Um, not too horrible. You've seen worse is what you're telling me? I've definitely seen worse. So this has probably been rebuilt at some point. It's possible. I mean, from 1949 to now, if it hasn't been, that would be a surprise. Well, what are you ripping off now? Taking your float out, which is dry. Sounds like there's nothing in there, which is a plus. So the float still floats? It should still float, yes. Your needle on seat, which definitely looks like it's been replaced at one point or another. And the needle in seat shows what? Basically, very similar to a toilet in your house. The When the float comes up, just like in a toilet bowl, your float comes up, it shuts off the water in your toilet. It does the same thing with your carburetor. It will raise up and it will shut off the fuel. That's why you can't have a lot of pressure in a fuel system. You can only have... Probably, I would say maximum is about four pounds of pressure. Otherwise, it will be too much and push past your your needle and seat. And those the jets? Uh, these are not the jets. These are the venturis. Venturi. So let's air in there somehow. Uh, as the air goes down, fuel is drawn up through here and then down into the into the body of the carburetor. Accelerator air pump looks like it was in decent shape. Nothing. Couple of tears. Actually, it's a bunch of tears actually all across the bottom. So what is that? Your accelerator pump. You can see all the t all the tears right here uh, in the bottom of it. Yeah. So when you're pushing, pushing fuel down through the bore, it should come up and be distributed inside the carburetor or inside the Venturis. And with the holes like that, you're not pushing as much as you should have been. Volume was down? Definitely. So more than likely hesitation, lag, Anything along that lines. We're missing a screw. Did you take something off of? The I side took here? off the um, choke cable, so that was bolted on the back there. 
just so I know when I'm not searching everywhere when we go to put it back together. It looked like this right here. This little bracket right here on this one. Gotcha. I took that bracket off. That's a similar carb. As long as we know where it is, that's the important thing. Most part dry. And that's the power valve? Yeah, this is the power valve. And you can see down inside right in here where it's very shiny, like it's been leaking gas. So the big thing with that is because of the way these work and the way it sits in here, you basically have vacuum on this side and down inside here you have gasoline. So if that little rubber diaphragm on the inside goes bad, which I suspect it probably was as shiny as it is, um, fuel gets drawn straight out of the bowl and down through here right into the intake manifold. Uh, what can happen there is it runs way too rich, uh, floods the motor, it can uh, flood it while it's just sitting there after it's shut off. Fuel just keeps, in some cases, well, depending on how large the hole is, keep draining down right into the uh, intake manifold. And then we got to worry about what, hydro locking? Uh, the possibility of hydro locking, probably not, only because there's not enough fuel in a bowl to do that, but you definitely can cause a rich mixture if it sits there too long and gets down into the cylinders it can get past the pistons and saturate the oil well that kind of a thing the fuel wash is never good yep definitely not so i mean otherwise i mean for the most part everything looks pretty decent in here i don't see anything too crazy um definitely the accelerator pump i did i don't i never check the float levels when i take them out because it really doesn't make a difference to me i'm gonna reset the floats anyway when I put the new needle and seat in. Mm -hmm. So I never check them, but that's in the rebuild process. Yeah, everything else looks pretty decent. Um, I don't see anything out of the, that looks really, really bad. Accelerator pump, needle, uh, power valve, everything else looks like it's in pretty good shape. So in the cleaning process, I'll get all this done really good. I'll get everything, I'll start getting everything polished. I'm gonna clean up this really well. It closes up well, and um, I'm gonna paint it black. It'll pa be painted a gloss black, so that way it doesn't rust up like this. Uh, so when it goes back in the car, it's gonna look really nice. All right, so next step is in the tank. Next step's going in the tank. Uh, I'll pull it out tomorrow. I'm gonna soak it over the evening, get it ready to go back together. All right, so I will see you tomorrow. All right. For the rebuild, stay tuned. What's going on? Where's the carb? Working on it right now as we're speaking. What? Ooh, it looks shiny. Definitely a little different, huh? <laughs> All right, so it's been 24 hours. Give or take. Give or take. Look at this thing right here, this float. This looks like not mine. No, no. It's what I do, I clean them all up, make them look good, make them work out well. And then we got shininess there. Yeah, and painted the base so it doesn't rust all up on you. All right, so what are you gonna do next? Just start putting it together. A little bit of uh, elbow grease. Elbow grease, get it together, get it a basic settings and what is what's original and to start it off with and give it back to you with everything you need to put it on with. I've always often heard, it's not the size of the wrench that matters, it's how you use it. Well, there's that. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be inside. Everything turned out really well. Uh, cleaned up nice. Now it's just a matter of putting everything back in its, in its place and getting you all taken care of. Then the question is, will it run? Oh, I'm sure it'll run. And the interesting thing is when I pulled it all apart and after cleaning everything, I found out that this says... Beasley Industries remanufactured, so it was redone before. I'm assuming, I've never heard of Beasley, so I'm not sure, but I'm assuming that it was uh, remanuf remanufactured, rebuilt before. So it's not the original carb. Definitely not the original carb. So you got me looking for that screw I was talking about yesterday. <clears throat> we went through it. It's that screw yeah, that right one. there. Yeah. Well, I'm looking for it, so. <laughs> All right. You know, how come I didn't stand on this side yesterday? The lighting is so much better over here. I don't know. You're the videographer. Yeah. Just get to your good side. <laughs> we'll call it that for today. Mm -hmm.
If anybody was wondering, okay. he's, he's wearing the shirt today. The shop. Don't call him. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, I'm listening to make sure that the pump actually pumps, well, pump fuel. If it pumps air, it'll definitely have to pump fuel. So That's the accelerator pump you're accelerator checking. Accelerator pump, yes. Yeah. Does it give off a specific sound when you... No, you just really hear it squirting. You can hear the air uh, coming up and out past the, the pump check. Carburetor farts? Yeah. Ooh, it's shiny. Shiny, no more rust or no more sand and stuff inside. Ethanol? Well, there's... Yeah. Just got to make sure you keep keep the car up and running. Keep it, you know, don't let it set for too long. Let the gas evaporate out. That's that's the worst part. When the gasoline evaporates and leaves the ethanol in there, it causes uh, all the problems you have. Modern fuel. Uh, you know, everything's always better. Which would you like, lead or ethanol? Definitely take the lead. <laughs> well, the big thing with the flatheads, they say the lead used to help lubricate the in-block valves. Yes. So they wouldn't bind up. And then once they switch over to ethanol, everybody's flats heads were seasoned up when they let them sit. All the valve assemblies were getting stuck inside the blocks. Yeah, it's it's such a bad, uh, unfortunate thing that they decided to start making better stuff. Nothing like the good old days. Well, now, you know, you got electric, you got all that stuff now, and I still stay busy. Until they decide that they're going to make everybody put electricity in their vintage cars. So you're saying you're not electrifying your car? I will not. All right, so I'm guessing you're measuring the float? Yeah, I'm going to measure the height of the float, which actually has to be adjusted up a little bit. Or should I say down, actually? Because it's too, too high currently. And that will allow the carburetor bowl to fill? Uh, the needle and seat is what allows it to fill, so basically it hangs upside down like this, and as you gas comes in through your fuel inlet, comes down past the needle and seat, as, your, as the amount of fuel grows in the bowl, it will eventually shut that fuel supply off um, until you utilize it again, which allows it to go back and forth. If you don't have the right amount of fuel in there or whatever, it takes too much long or too long too long for the fuel to uh, get back up into the ball and can cause hesitation and all of that. That's not an extra part for mine, is it? That's your old accelerator pump. Ooh, it came with a new one? Came with a new piece, yep. New, That's new. the one I took this off of. So, oh, so that was the old one. All of that. A common misconception among a lot of people is, because I just turned your carburetor over, is never to turn a carburetor over. And realistically, if it doesn't have fuel in it, doesn't have any kind of sediment, you can turn it over all day as long as you're not banging it up and down, because you will eventually change the float level. But turning it over like this, just to make sure I'm giving you the right gasket to put it back on with, is absolutely fine. So if you were to turn a carburetor over that had fuel in it, there's chances there are that the sediment's going to drop in and clog yeah. something up. Yeah, you then any kind of sediment, any kind of rust, whatever might be in there, will mix up in there. It can get stuck in needle, needle and seat, allow it to not shut off, all of that kind of thing. And then we just negate everything we did. Unfortunately, yes. So that's why I always tell everybody, make sure you put in a brand new filter in there, somewhere in line, because this especially does not have any kind of filter in the carburetor. Um, so make sure there's a new filter in line when you put it back together. Uh, so that way you're feeding it the best fuel that you can. All right. So is that it? Uh, that is pretty much it. Um, can't think of any doubts. Right. So my next question, Jerry, will it run? Of course it'll run. It'll run? Well, you're supposed to say, well, you'll have to stick around for the next video to watch that. Oh, well, then in that case, that's all on you. <laughs> See you in the next video.